Hey guys, welcome to the video. This is going to be the second video in my fuel cell fabrication. And in this video, well, what I'm doing right now is I'm fine tuning the threads uh, for these plugs and for the the threaded bung for my vent. I always have a little bit of trouble with these NP NPT threads because you know if you thread it in too far, then your your fitting goes in and it bottoms out before it actually tightens up enough on the threads. So what I always end up doing is I have to thread it in some, put the fitting in there, check it, see if I went far enough or too far, and just going back and forth and back and forth, which is what I'm doing now um, to test my depth. But anyways, uh, since I made the first video, I have installed the fuel pumps, I've got the fuel filler, I have uh, 3D printed these brackets to hold the fuel line and to hold the fuel filter. Um, what I need to do now is once I get these threads taken care of, I need to take all the stuff off, take all the bolts out, take it up into the garage, solid weld it, and then solid weld the whole fuel cell. And that's a big project because my TIG welder is air cooled, it's not water cooled. So on something like this, I can only weld for so long before everything heats up and I have to just stop and get, give everything some time to cool. So I'll be working on welding that. Then once I have all that welded up, I need to reinstall all this, putting all the threads in and doing thread locker to seal everything up, then install all this stuff, then I need to pressurize it so that I can see if I have any leaks and Typically, I do have leaks that need some attention. See, like I went a little, not too far, but I definitely don't want to go any farther on that one. All right, so as you just saw, I took everything out of the top plate here. I brought it out to the garage here. I've wiped down these edges and the, and the edges on the box with denatured alcohol. Now I'm going to uh, fire up the TIG welder and start TIGging this up. I'll tack it all first and then I'll just start welding at various places all over and then I'll have to weld as much as I can and then stop because my TIG welder's only air cooled so once my torch gets so hot I, I just have to stop and let it cool.
Okay, guys, now I've, uh, I've welded the whole thing up. That took all of yesterday, because like I said, I can't weld it all at one time. I have to keep letting my, my equipment cool down and then come back and hit it. It turned out pretty good. This, this aluminum is pretty thick. It's eighth inch and almost quarter inch, so that's easier to weld, but welding fuel cells is difficult because it needs to be, it needs to be waterproof or fuel proof. So what I'm going to do now is I need to pressure test it um, really before I go any farther. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I'm going to go into the basement and I'm going to put all the studs in and I'm going to, you know, you know, use generous amounts of red Loctite. And then once I do that, I'm going to heat the top of it up with my heat gun because that will, uh, that will force the Loctite to cure or to harden up. So I'll do that. Then I'm going to install the fuel filler. You know, I'm going to put the gasket on that and make that solid. Then what I'm going to do is where the fuel pumps go. I don't want to pressure test with the fuel pumps yet because I'm going to get leakage going out the fuel pumps and I don't know exactly how to cap them on the filter side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut a piece of aluminum that will fill this hole from the back side and I'm just going to fill it with silicone. And then I'll do my pressure tests because then I can test the welds which is the main thing I'm looking to test. And I can test the studs and I can test the fittings that I'm going to put over here. When I fill it with air it's going to be 10 psi. I'm not going to go over 10 psi. And then I've got some spray leak detecting solution which is basically a high concentrate of water and Dawn dish soap. And I'll spray it over all the welds, all the studs, and, and see if air is leaking out everywhere. All right, so I went down in the basement and I threaded in all of the studs for everything. I Loctited them and I'm hoping that that seals them up really well. Then I went and installed the filler and I installed the rings but I just put a rubber gasket where the fuel pumps go because like I said earlier, I don't really want to test those during this pressure test. I just want to test the tank itself. Then I've, this is my vent line. These are the two plugs. And this has got a fitting on it so that I can plug it into my air compressor. And then I'm going to set my air compressor to 10 pounds. All right. Then I got Big Blue, which is some um, micro leak detector solution which is basically water and a high concentrate of dish soap in in the past when i haven't had any of this i've just taken a little spray bottle and put water in there and then just put a whole bunch of dawn dish soap and it does the same thing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pressurize this and then i'm going to over every single weld spray some of this detection solution work it around with my finger and watch it and see if it bubbles if I get some leaks, which most likely I will, I'll show you. Um, and I'm also going to do that to the studs and, you know, around all over the place. Man, check this out. I hit it with air and I could hear it hissing like crazy. So I'm checking a couple things trying to find the leak. Come find out, there's a hole. 
right in the metal. Really, that's from like wherever this metal came from. Somebody must have uh, hit it with a plasma torch or something. I have no idea. That is. I can't just weld this up because I've got I got to take the fuel filler off because I can't get it that hot right next to it. All that look, all that checking I did of the welds and everything, I never saw that little hole. All right, we're back. I welded that up. Now I'm ready to start pressure testing again. Uh, I was actually able to do it is I wrapped this part over here with a damp cloth so that it got hot, but it didn't let it get so hot that it caused any problems. So, all right, back to where we were. Let's give it another go. So here's what I'm doing, guys. I got the, uh, the soap solution here. Give it just kind of a general spray of the area that you're checking. And then, like this is what it's gonna look like if it's leaking. See it bubbling up there? Not worried about that, that's a temporary gasket though. What I'm really checking are these welds. So run your, just run your finger over it so that you get a good buildup of some of this soap. Then just watch it, see if it bubbles up. Same thing, I wanna check these threads. So I get some around there. Always give it a couple of seconds because when you push the solution around the first thing that usually happens is there's there's always some little tiny bubbles in here just from spraying it give the bubbles a couple seconds to you know they'll pop together and do a couple things but then give them a couple seconds watch it you know and it's not doing anything so none of that's leaking Alright guys, I just did the pressure test and um, none of my welds had any leaks. I'm actually really proud of that. That's um, usually I've got a couple of pinholes that I need to fix and I did have to, I had to fix this one little hole but that wasn't from a welding hole. So my, uh, the brackets for pump number one over here overhang off the side of the tank. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mock up the fuel line holder and I'm going to put the fuel filter holder and the fuel filter in there. And then I'm going to just whip up some bracket that comes out and just gives it some support so that you can't just knock into it because that'll just break the plastic right off and, and they'll be broken. I built the uh, bracket back here for this fuel filter and the fuel lines to give them some protection. You know, with the way that I laid all this stuff out, I had to push this fuel filter and these fuel lines back, and I wanted something to protect it so that when it's in the car, you know, it's not going to be getting all hit with anything. Everything has now been sealed up. It's got its gaskets. All the nuts and bolts have been thread lockered. This is literally ready to go. So the next thing that I'm going to do is yank out the temporary fuel tank that I have in there, Pull out the bracket that I made for that and then see what I need to do to install this. Um, I'm probably going to do a separate video th for that because I have been working on this thing for well over a week. Um, so I think I'm going to call this video quits and show you the actual installation of the fuel cell in another video. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you like the fuel cell. I really like the way it turned out. I'm really, I'm really proud of it. I feel safe with this one, with the way I hooked everything up. Um, so I hope these videos are helping you guys, motivating you, get you out working on your own thing, whatever. And I hope to see you on the next video. Take care.